Hi, I'm John Kelly. I'm here at Tile Yard in my room in Unit 8 and I'm going to tell you today about my Euphonics CS3000 console. I've had it for 20 years. It's been a great master for me and uh, I want to show you today what the magical things that it will do because I think it was way ahead of its time. It's, in fact, a lot of people think it's a digital desk. It's not a digital desk, it's an analog desk, but it's digitally controlled. So the, what we're looking at here is the control surface. This is where, obviously, the operation comes from. But this is the, all, the only digital side of it. It's like a giant typewriter function, really. But the analog side of the desk is in my machine room, where we'll go and see in a minute. And there, that's where all the analog channels are, and the computer is, and that's, what contro that's what's controlled from this surface here. So 28 faders on the bottom, and you've got 28 faders on the top, so 56 inputs, basically. Back in 1999, when I bought the desk, I was doing more and more work from home, and I had a nice basement in my house in Chiswick. And I decided to uh, try and put a little basement studio together which snowballed from the start from one little tiny Mackie desk and the next minute I was going around to major manufacturers sorting out desks. When you're working on the console, you can make a, a snapshot of it. Quite easy to do, say you just choose the page you'd like to record it on, snapshot, store, you name it. As today, you store it in there, I've stored it in snapshot five. So that's now stored forever in association with this title which also means that we can I mean I can effectively completely zero the desk with one button like that and then recall that instantly recall that snapshot it's just it was uh, it is still revolutionary and it is mind-boggling even today it's a very comprehensive EQ it's a very great visual reference it's quite a benign EQ it's not a very characterful one like a Neve or an SSL it's very smooth, it's very, very hi-fi, very sweet, uh, very usable in most circumstances. It's got a great bottom end and a very nice high top end. The mid-range is, is okay, but some people love it. So this is a Euphonics tower. This, this has all the analog part of the desk. This is what's controlled by the control surface we were just looking at. This unit here is the computer unit. Shall I take this? sticker off. Bloody hell, that's 1998 computer technology. I think it's DOS or something. So here we come to the most favourite bit of people coming into my studio. They love this, the patch bay. Um, this is where you tie everything together. This is where I bring, I can bring the outboard gear into, into, into use with the desk. Each one of these strips, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, corresponds to the seven pods on the desk. So one, two, three, four channels, one, two, three, four. I have um, microphone and line inputs. Then they have the L3, L4, L1, L2, L3, L4. Then they have the outputs, the direct outputs, and the stereo outputs. So it's very comprehensive. It's laid out in a different way to a lot of patch bays. Once you get used to it, it's okay. But uh, Again, you have great flexibility and control and um, able to get into most of the functions of the, of the desk, of the playback and the record element of the desk. So above it, I've got access to getting into some of my outboard mic pre's. And then I have another row of all the outboard gear, uh, the 1176s, the LA-2A, the LA-3A, these Neve units, there's some Pultex there, and tons of stuff. Good fun.